So the 2024 NFL Draft is officially in the books. We now know every single player the Packers have drafted. A ton of different picks once again. And honestly, I love what happened here. If you guys have watched my, my videos the past couple of days, breaking down round one, two, three, doing the whole thing. After those first few rounds, I was already pretty satisfied with what happened. And overall, with the way that the, the Packers drafted here, the way that Gudikins drafted, I'm very satisfied as a Packers fan. And I think when we look at this Packers team, the fact that last year the Packers came in, outplayed expectations, played much better than most people around the NFL thought possible, make the playoffs in Jordan Love's first year as a starter, destroy the Cowboys, which was awesome to see, and then almost beat the 49ers, almost make it to the NFC Championship in Jordan Love's first year. Clearly, the the pieces the Packers had was enough to get them that far. And I think, you know, looking at this offseason, we did lose some pieces here and there, but there weren't any really major pieces that the Packers really lost. Maybe outside David Bocciari, but he wasn't even really playing too much because of his injury. And so there were some there were some holes on this team, no doubt. Safety, linebacker, offensive line. But the Packers really shored up lots of those holes in this draft, drafting three offensive linemen, drafting three safeties, and two linebackers. So the three positions that were of biggest need for the Packers, they came in, drafted multiple players at those positions, which is something the Packers have done in past years. You look at the past few seasons, drafting receivers when they had a weakness there. Last year, drafting three wide receivers, Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Grant DuBose, and of course, lots of those guys have come through and started playing really well. And so when you draft multiple players at those positions, lots of times one of those guys, a couple of those guys break through. Obviously, the ones drafted earlier have a much higher chance of, I think, you know, producing where people, you know, I guess producing at a high level. Um, some of those lower tier guys, when you get a lot of them, sometimes guys rise to the top, just like Rashid Walker, who was a seventh round draft pick who played really well at left tackle after David Bautiari went went uh, went down last season. And so, all in all, I love this draft. Now let's get into it. To start off round one at pick number 25, there were so many different things the Packers could have done. Um, they decided to go tackle with tackle Jordan Morgan. And if you watch Brian Gutekind's press conference after round one, you can just tell that the Packers had this guy pretty high on their board. They said that it was a pretty easy decision considering where they had him ranked. And so I'm curious exactly you know, how high they had Jordan Morgan ranked, but you can tell that the Packers are very satisfied with um, you know, bringing Jordan Morgan in here. And so he has that ability to play guard, to play tackle. And so with Batiari gone, Yash Nyman gone, John Runyon Jr. gone, there was a need of more depth here on this offensive line. And odds are Jordan Morgan will will probably start in his first season. That would be my guess right now. Obviously, we'll need to see what happens in training camp, things like that. But he has that ability to play left tackle, the ability to play guard. And I think right now, looking at it, with Rasheed Walker playing really well at left tackle, with Zach Tom playing really well at right tackle, Jordan Morgan could be the Packers' right guard in 2024. Running junior left, who played a ton of snaps at right guard. Sean Ryan played there as well, and so I think there could be a competition there. But Jordan Morgan, in my opinion, will probably would probably beat out Sean Ryan just based on his talent and his skill set. Um, but I love that that pick there, a versatile offensive lineman who you can really move around wherever you want uh, when it comes to guard or tackle. So round one, very satisfied with that kind of pick. You can never go wrong, you know, drafting guys, big guys to protect your quarterback, especially when your quarterback is named Jordan Love. You want to keep him as safe as possible back there in the pocket. Then coming into round two, the Packers, I mean, we've had a ton of draft picks the past few seasons in the first three rounds. And uh, of course, this pick was from the uh, Aaron Rodgers trade. The Packers, though, trade away that pick, move from 41 to 45, get a couple other draft picks. I believe it was a fifth round pick and sixth round pick, moving back four spots. And they take Texas A&M linebacker Edger and Cooper. And with the Packers moving to Jeff Halfley as a new defensive coordinator here in 2024, moving from that 3-4 defense to a 4-3 defense, linebacker was already going to be a, a position of need just you know having those three, three middle linebackers on the field at the same time when they're not playing in nickel. And in the NFL these days, you know nickel has played a majority of the time, uh, but still the Packers needed to add some linebacker depth. Devondra Campbell left, and so before this draft, the Packers had... Quay Walker, McDuffie, Isaiah McDuffie, Eric Wilson, a couple other lower tier uh, type players, more more kind of backup types, uh, and they get a a stud linebacker in Edger and Cooper, who 
looking at some of his stats, well, very, very good against the run, but you can see his physicality. And the Packers seem to see him similarly to Quay Walker. It sounds like they believe those guys could be uh, interchangeable, play any of those middle linebacker positions. And so I love that. Honestly, when you look at the Packers defense, the two weak spots before this draft, linebacker and safety, and they come in round two, get Edger and Cooper, love the pick. Then in the second pick and the second round for the Packers, they take another position of need. They go with safety from Georgia, Javon Bullard. Now, the Packers this offseason move on or you know moved on from Darnell Savage, Jonathan Owens, Rudy Ford, the guys who had spent a majority of the time at safety last year. And that was, I'd say, one of the Packers' weak spots last year in the secondary. And so, of course, they come in, bring in Xavier McKinney, one of my favorite signings of the entire offseason, uh, bringing in one of the top-tier free agent safeties. Love that with Jeff, in Jeff Halfley's new defense. Now you get another top-tier player in Javon Bullard, who the Packers believe can play anywhere. He, play, he spent some time at slot uh, corner as well during college. The Packers believe he can play anywhere. Same with Xavier McKinney. And so they have that ability to, to flip them in and out wherever they want. And I, I was watching one interview. I can't remember if it was a Packers scout. Someone on the Packer, in the Packers organization talking about how you know it's going to be tough for defenses because <clears throat> on certain situations, Bullard can play any kind of positions uh, when it comes to the secondary. So can Xavier McKinney back there at safety. And so they can really do lots of different things with these guys, you know, switch them up, things like that. And so uh, to have a, another safety here that you can pair with Xavier McKinney was definitely a, a um, you know, big need here for this Packers team coming into this draft. And I was hoping they would get one early just so that we could have a starter there and not have to, you know, maybe have a weak spot in the, on the defense at safety where you maybe have three, four guys who are maybe typically should be backups trying to compete for that other spot. I was glad that they came in round two and get get a guy who can come in and, and hopefully be a really key piece on this defense in 2024. And I think that's what they did in round two. They get two players who I think will probably, it seems like they'll probably be starting next season, Edron Cooper and Javon Bullard. Those are the two weak spots. The Packers fill them up. And that's why I love these first two rounds, especially because, uh, you know, an area areas of weakness on this defense no longer seem to be areas of weakness. They, of course, are young players. They'll have to learn the scheme, but they seem to have the talent and the abilities to come in and be productive right away, which is very exciting. Now to round three, we take a running back from USC, Marshawn Lloyd. The Packers running back situation has been one of the you know biggest changes this offseason. Moving on from Aaron Jones, which was, you know, heartbreaking as a Packers fan to, to lose, you know, one of the, the key guys here in Green Bay, one of the guys that you know, just the heart, the heartbeat of this team, as Gutekinds had said earlier in the offseason. And it was just a sad day to lose him. He, of course, goes to the Vikings, even worse. Uh, feel bad for him over there. Um, but then the Packers bring in Josh Jacobs, which I love that move, love that signing. They bring back A.J. Dillon. And so this move here in round three, I think the fact that the Packers made this move in round three shows that, you know, Lloyd could be that number two back in Green Bay, even in 2024. A.J. Dillon was brought back on a pretty cheap deal. Emmanuel Wilson is there, who I think is a pretty talented back. But Marshawn Lloyd, he has... I was actually seeing saw some numbers. He is very similar to Josh Jacobs in, in many different capacities. But he's a very explosive back. He's around 5'9", 200 or 210 pounds. So he's tough, he's physical, he's also fast. It's going to be interesting to see how the Packers use him. He's very explosive, can catch the ball. And in a few seasons, maybe Josh Jacobs is gone. Lloyd could take over and be that number one back in a couple of years. And so I think that he has a good shot at, at winning that number two job with Dylan and Emmanuel Wilson. But we'll have to watch how it plays out. Then the second pick of, the, of round three, the final pick here um, in the first three rounds for the Packers, we have another linebacker, this time Missouri linebacker Tyron Hopper from Missouri. And the Packers, we all knew they needed some depth at linebacker. They take Edger and Cooper round two. They come in once again and get another linebacker who... Um, can can bring some depth, you know, add some depth here to this linebacker room that was pretty pretty slim before this draft. And so um, I think that you know to get in some more some more bodies there, some more pieces was important. Now moving to round four, we have the second safety the Packers drafted. They drafted three total. They take uh, safety from Oregon, Evan Williams. And so as I said, the the area which was a huge need no longer a big need. Evan Williams, a very talented safety from Oregon. He's going to be able to come in there and um, potentially, you know, be a backup there to Javon Bullard. 
And when it comes to injuries in the NFL, you never know what could happen. So many injuries take place throughout the season. So the Packers get some more depth there. Then moving on to the fifth round, two fifth round picks. The Packers take their second offensive lineman of the draft from Duke, Jacob Monk. And typically, I mean, any of these offensive linemen the Packers draft have, have that ability to play multiple spots. And it seems like Jacob Monk is is going to be a guy who, you know, has that ability to, you know, to play a few different spots. I believe in college he played um, a lot of different positions during his time there. And when we look at him over his five seasons in college, he played 12 games at right tackle in his freshman year. Uh, then, though, he moved to mainly inside, 36 games at right guard, 10 at center. So he can play center. He can also play right guard. And so he could be some competition for Josh Myers at center coming into 2024. Josh Myers, I think he's a, he's an okay center, but I think there could be an upgrade there. Maybe Monk can beat, beat out Myers. Who knows? Um, but there is some more competition there, some more depth added to this Packers offensive line. And then for the final pick for the Packers of round five, we got safety number three, no longer a position of need. We got Oregon State safety, Keaton Aladapo, if I'm saying his name right. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his first name. I'll need to uh, check on that one. But he's a third safety the Packers drafted, 6'2", 216 pounds. And apparently this past season didn't allow a single touchdown pass on 421 snaps. I'm also curious to see maybe he's going to be a big special teams guy as we get a little bit later in this draft, a lot of times that is the case. And so I really love the look at the Packers safety room right now. We got Javon Bullard, Xavier McKinney seem to be the two starters likely there. And now we have two other safeties drafted behind them who could be solid backups and guys who, you know, if an injury happens, maybe they can come in and produce. So I love that, that move to uh, bring in that many safeties and then we have round six, another third offensive lineman tackle from Georgia State, Travis Glover at pick number 202, the third offensive lineman drafted. He can also play both tackle and guard. And so the Packers last season did not draft an offensive lineman, which was not very typical in years past before that. They had drafted lots of times three offensive linemen. My guess was they would probably draft two or three in this draft. They come in draft three. They lost three offensive linemen this offseason. They bring three in in this draft. The Packers are such a good team when it comes to developing offensive line talent. And so it's always good just to get a lot of offensive linemen coming in here because lots of times there'll be some random seventh rounder like Rasheed Walker or some other guys like Zach Tom round four, Batiari round four. Guys later in the draft who come through, the Packers develop them. They become really, really, a really solid uh, offensive lineman. So it's nice to get some numbers there and here because Lots of times you take some of those later on picks. Usually one of those guys is going to stand out at some point. And so the Packers <clears throat> bolstering that area where or that, that uh, position where they needed some depth. I do think the the Packers line last year was very good. One of the best in the NFL, especially when it came to pass blocking. Now with Jordan Morgan, he'll probably shore up that guard spot. Maybe he moves to tackle and Tom moves to guard. Who knows? There's a lot of possibilities with their uh, positional versatility on the offensive line. And so it seems like the Packers O-line will be, will be better than last season, which is pretty, uh, I mean, great news considering just how good the Packers offensive line was this past year when it came to protecting Jordan Love. And then the two final picks, and then I'll get my overall grade and thoughts uh, on this draft. We got first pick around seven, two-lane quarterback Michael Pratt. So the Packers decide to take a quarterback in this draft. Some comments from Brian Gutekunst made it sound like that would probably happen at some point in this draft. They go with a, a quarterback in round seven. And no, Jordan Love, his uh, his job is not, um, you know, he, he's not going to go to sleep tonight or, or have trouble going to sleep tonight with Michael Pratt now on the roster. Pratt's just coming in, probably going to be that number three quarterback. Maybe he competes with Sean Clifford for the number two spot. Who knows? But the Packers, they're one of the best in the NFL when it comes to developing quarterback talent. And so, you know, you could have a lot of options here with Pratt in the future. Maybe he becomes your your backup. Maybe he's a third guy. Maybe at some point you trade him, you trade Clifford, who knows? But the more quarterbacks you have here, the more you're developing them. <clears throat> it just gives you a lot of flexibility. So another quarterback here in Green Bay. Then to end it, the Packers finally get a cornerback. They get Ken, uh, sorry, Penn State's Kalen King uh, cornerback with pick number 255, the final pick for the Packers in this draft. And when we look at Kalen King, he was a... A uh, very productive, productive player a year before this past season. This past year didn't play as well. 
And I was reading in the uh, video I did on him specifically that Dane Brugler of The Athletic, right after the 2023 draft, had him projected as a first rounder. So clearly things didn't go as well in this past season for him. But I think the fact that he you know, has shown that on tape that he can be that kind of player, that top tier type player, maybe the Packers can develop him, teach him some things, and maybe he gets back to, to playing at that level. And the Packers potentially got a steal here in the seventh round. So all in all, I love this draft because there were a few holes here. The biggest holes, safety and linebacker, where you could have drafted a guy to come in and, and be your starter in 2024. I believe that's what the Packers did. Edron Cooper, Javon Bullard, Morgan, Jordan Morgan could also be starting, probably, I would guess, uh, coming into his first season. So the first three picks come in, you feel positions of need. Honestly, outside of those three positions, if the Packers would have drafted, um, let's say, an edge rusher early, they probably wouldn't play a ton year one, maybe just a little bit of backup role. If you would have drafted a you know wide receiver tight end, those positions are loaded for the Packers. The only position that could have made sense, I think an, another one that could make sense early, would be cornerback. Maybe you get a round one quarterback. He becomes a, uh, the starter opposite Jair Alexander. Maybe he beats out Carrington Valentine, Eric Stokes. But after the first couple of rounds, uh, it didn't seem that important for me to take a cornerback because the Packers don't really have that much of a depth problem there. It would be more so if you want to get maybe a, a top tier elite corner, you take one early. When they didn't do that, I didn't think it was that big of a need. They get Kalen King in the seventh round. So um, I really love what the Packers did here. They they shored up some of the, the biggest needs and then get some other positions um, filled in here. They didn't draft a wide receiver, which I don't think was needed. They've drafted a ton the past few seasons. That, that position group is fine. Didn't draft a defensive lineman or an edge rusher. So that is interesting. I think that shows just how confident the Packers are. I thought they could have drafted an edge rusher this year just because Preston Smith is getting a little bit older. Kinsley Inigbari returning from a torn ACL. So who knows when he will be back. But the Packers D-line, defensive tackles, edge rusher room, honestly pretty solid, which I think is why the Packers didn't really think they needed to draft one of those guys. My guess is maybe with these undrafted players in the next few hours, they pick some 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 more guys up there in that area. Um, but all in all, I love this draft. I really do. Gudikins continues to come through. Uh, we've seen it in years past. He's uh, you know, he has a process. The Packers have a process. They follow it, and typically things go very well. And right now, I love this draft. So I'm going to give this draft an A overall. I really just don't think you could have done much more here. You bring in a ton of positions that you know had some needs there. You bring in a lot of numbers. You know, maybe you you could have drafted um, you know, an edge rusher instead of a third offensive lineman, or maybe you draft a you know, defensive lineman instead of a third safety, something like that potentially. But I feel like it's not that big a deal. And uh, to get uh, Marshawn Lloyd round three, Daniel Jeremiah, draft expert, former scout, said that Marshawn Lloyd is his his top running back. So who knows what's going to happen there. He could become a top tier back in this league eventually. And so all in all, I love this draft. You couldn't ask for more. The Packers just came off a, you know, a season where they almost make the NFC championship. And then you come in and fill holes that you really need. So things could not have gone better, honestly, much better at all in this draft. And so I love the outlook now for the Packers coming into 2024. We now have an entire idea of what this team is going to look like. And uh, it's looking real pretty. I'm very excited and hopeful for what this year can be for be like in 2024 with Jeff Halfley coming in on defense. He has a ton of new pieces to work with. I think it's going to be a, a very fun year to be a Packers fan. But Thank you so much for watching all this draft content. It's been it's always fun, the draft weekend, to put out all these different videos, breaking down all the prospects. Uh, so thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, feel free to. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Um, but I will be covering the Packers, as I always do, in the coming months, through OTAs, through training camp, and then the season will finally be here in a few months, and we'll get back to, to covering some, some real live football, some games. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys, as always. And I'll see you guys next time.